types of elements which make up that compound are not enough to tell us the type of bond in which exists. This is where we have to look at the properties of bonding. We look at the physical We first look at the physical properties of that compound. That's how they look. And what we're focusing on is the state of matter that that compound exists at room temperature. Is it a solid? Is it a liquid? Or is it a gas? We then focus on the chemical properties. That's how an element or a compound behaves. The two experiments that we can do to identify how that substance behaves is looking at conductivity and looking at solubility. So how do I know I've got a metallic substance? We already know that metals are found on the left hand side of the periodic table. Let's take lithium for example. Lithium has the atomic number 3 and the mass number 7. That means it's got 4 neutrons inside its nucleus and 3 protons which are positive. The electron arrangement is 2-1. That means in the first energy level, it has two electrons, and in the second energy level, it has one electron. That's a total of three electrons, which are negatively charged. So the overall charge of that particle is zero. Because we have three positives, three negatives, they cancel each other out, which tells us that that's an atom. We know that all elements want to achieve stability by having a full, stable outer electron shell. Metals will always lose outer electrons to form positive ions. It wants to have the electron arrangement too. As a result, the number of electrons change. We now have two electrons. Three positive plus two negative gives our overall charge of positive. This means that metal atoms prefer to sit as metal ions. The electron sits next to this. Because the electrons are able to move, we say that those are delocalized. This allows us to work out the key definition for metallic bonding. Metallic bonding is the electrostatic force of attraction between positive ions, which are formed from losing the outer electrons, and the delocalized electrons, and these are the electrons that can move. We can see that we've got the diagram which represents a metallic bond. We can see the positive ions, and the electrons which are able to move throughout the lattice structure. We know that opposites attract, so the positive ions are attracted to the delocalized electrons as they've got opposite charges. This allows them to have a strong bond. As a result, metallic substances usually exist as a solid. There is only one liquid metal, which is mercury. Because they've got a strong bond, they have high melting points and boiling points. This is because the strong metallic bonds have to be broken. Conductivity is the flow of charged particles. We know that metals always conduct electricity. This is because the electrons, which are delocalized, are able to move freely throughout the lattice structure. The last property we look at is solubility. Solubility is the ability of a substance, which is normally known as a solute, to dissolve in a solvent, which is usually a liquid. If it is able to dissolve, we say that the substance is soluble. And if it is unable to dissolve, we say that the substance is insoluble. The group one metals can dissolve in water to form bases. This is why they're known as the alkali metals. There'll be a little bit more on this in Unit 3 when we focus on the metal topic about which particular metals can dissolve in water and what they actually form when they do. This past paper question is from the National 5 2018 Multiple Choice 28. Metallic bonding is the force of attraction between. Now, we already know that metals want to lose electrons to form positive ions. So we want to make sure that we are looking for the positive ions. The only one that says that is multiple choice answer D. This is a key definition that we have to know. What we can see is in this diagram, 
we have the positive ion and we have the delocalised electrons which are able to flow through the lattice structure. This past paper question is from the National 5 uh, specimen paper, multiple choice 14. Which of the following diagrams could be used to represent the structure of a metal? Well, again, we know that metals lose electrons to form positive ions. At the moment, the only ones that show positives are multiple choice answer A and D. But we know that when they lose electrons, those electrons don't disappear. We should be able to see an electron, which is represented by the letter E and a little negative charge. That tells us that multiple choice answer A is the correct answer. This past paper question is from the National 5, 2014, written to A. The properties of a substance depend on its type of bonding and structure. There are four types of bonding and structure. Discrete covalent molecular, covalent network, ionic lattice and metallic lattice. Complete the table to match up each type of bonding and structure with its properties. The easiest one to start with is covalent molecular. That's the only one which has low melting points and boiling points. So the correct placement for that is that they do not conduct electricity and have low melting points. The next one, which is easiest to do, is in the order in which it's given in the question, is a covalent network. We know that covalent substances never conduct electricity. This is because the electrons are fixed in a bond. So point number one is the covalent network because they do not conduct electricity and they have high melting points because the strong covalent bonds need to be broken. When we're looking at metallic substances, we know that they always conduct electricity. All metals conduct electricity. So if we look at the third point, conduct electricity when solid and have a wide range of melting points. This is our metallic bond, which leaves us to place the ionic lattice structure with the high melting points and conduct electricity when liquid and not solid. When you go on to the next lesson, we will go on to why this is the case for ionic substances.